Hello, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee right now here in Vienna, in Austria. We have a very intriguing and important show for you today. It's intriguing because I'm sitting right here and not making my coffee, as I usually do when we begin the show, and you don't know why I'm doing that, and I'm not going to tell you. And the show is important because we're going to talk about St. Maximus the Confessor, a great father of the 7th century who endured great suffering for standing up against a teaching called monothelitism, or the doctrine of one will. This doctrine claimed that in the person of Jesus Christ there is only one will, a divine will, while denying the presence in Christ of our human will. Underlying this teaching is a very pessimistic view of our human will. Now, before you turn this video off, because you're thinking, this 7th century controversy is irrelevant to my life today, and it's probably very complicated, let me just say that you're partly right. It is complicated. But it's not irrelevant to us today, and you might find it very interesting, actually. Because you see, Zillions, if we stop to reflect a bit on a controversy like this one that deals with the human side or the human nature of Christ, what we learn is how we ourselves as Christians understand our own human nature, which has been embraced and redeemed in its entirety by the God-man, Jesus Christ. And this phenomenon, which we call our will, is not easy to understand. Most of us, at some time or another, have experienced the contradictions of our will, or perhaps some inability to control our actions according to our will. For example, we might want two mutually exclusive things at once, or we want one thing but find ourselves doing another thing, like surfing the internet when we want to do our work, or going on a diet and not sticking to it. Even the Apostle Paul exclaims in his epistle to the Romans, I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do, wretched man that I am. But St. Paul immediately adds, right after that cry of exasperation, Who will set me free from the body of this death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because you see, Zillions, indeed, the human will is present in Christ, as also St. Maximus insisted, which means that in Christ there is hope for the human will. There is redemption also of that part of our nature, because he made it his own in his incarnation by taking it on. We'll explain more of this as we take a look at the life and thoughts of St. Maximus. St. Maximus was born in the late 6th century in Palestine, according to the earliest version of his life. He was well educated and served the Emperor Heraclius for a time at the Byzantine imperial court. It was at this time that the Patriarch of Constantinople, named Sergius, who was a great patriot of the Byzantine Empire, really he was more of a patriot than a theologian, at this time he began to develop the teaching of only one divine energy or operation in Christ, a teaching that was soon to evolve into the teaching I already described to you of one will in Christ called monothelitism. The motivations for developing this teaching were both political and theological. On the one hand, there was the hope that perhaps the teaching on one will could serve as a compromise to attain union with the so-called Monophysites. These were large groups of people who left the Church of Constantinople because they disagreed with the teaching on the two natures of Christ. You see, these people who left the Church of Byzantium, also ceased to be loyal to the Byzantine Emperor, which was a political problem. So winning them back theologically was also important politically. But there was also sincere theological confusion regarding the human will of Christ, 
because the human will in its operation or movement did not have a good reputation in ancient thinking. I don't want to bore you with too many details, Zillions, but it is important to know that theologians at this time were still influenced by Origen, the Alexandrian theologian of the third century, who considered movement in general, kinesis, including the movement of the will, a bad thing, a falling away from what he imagined was the original, ideal, unmoving state of souls, stasis, which Origen imagined existed before the creation of the visible world. According to Origen's thinking, it was the movement of souls that was their fall and necessitated the creation of the material world called genesis, genesis. So, according to this vision of things, the material world is the result of sin, you see, of a fall from perfect stillness. I'm sorry if that was a bit too complicated, but I would like for you to understand the deep-seated presumptions that affected the thinking of Christian theologians of that time concerning the human will and its movement or its exercise. As you can see, this kind of vision of the creation of the world leads to a very pessimistic view not only of the human being, but of the material world in general. When St. Maximus began to battle the teaching of monothelitism, as he did, he had to deal with these originist ideas in which he himself was well educated. And deal with them he did because Maximus corrected Origen's teaching on the origins of the world, or his cosmology, as follows. Maximus explained, please stay with me because this won't be that long. Maximus explained that first came Genesis, God's creation of the world, as a movement of his divine will. So that's a good thing. And as a result, as a reply to God, comes creation's movement or kinesis toward God. And finally, creation strives, we all strive, through this movement towards God to achieve stasis or rest in God. Thus, Maximus shows how movement, including movement of the will, is a good thing. Maximus was also very insistent that this process of our movement towards God is made possible through the incarnation, that is, the bringing together of the human and the divine natures in the one person of Jesus Christ. Through communion with that person, the God-man, we proceed on the path of our own divinization, or theosis, by working together in synergy with his will. Synergy is an important word here. And even when, when our free will turns in another direction or ceases to strive toward God, we know that the door remains open for us again to change direction and to change our mind and accept the grace of repentance, or metania, which is so often described in the Gospel. Saint Maximus did not live to see his theology triumph against the teaching of monothelitism, which during his lifetime was embraced not only by the emperor, but also by the majority of bishops of, in the East. Maximus actually found support in Rome from a pope, Saint Martin, but eventually both Maximus and Saint Martin were arrested and subjected to torture and exile for their uncompromising stance against the teaching that degraded the human will. Maximus died in exile in 662 after enduring enormous pressure and torture from imperial and church authorities, including finally having his right hand severed and his tongue cut out. What church historians often note about Saint Maximus is his humility. While being the leading theologian of his time, for example, he never accepted ordination of any kind, remaining a simple monk, 
But he maintained his resolve to stand up for what he knew to be true against practically his entire hierarchy and the imperial government, and what they thought was beneficial for the unity of the imperial church. Maximus's opponents found the simple monk's unbending will arrogant, that is, lacking humility. Thus, Maximus teaches us something about humility and the human will. First of all, humility does not belong in the area of conviction. We are not being humble when we repeat falsehoods that are preached by people in positions of authority. Because by virtue of our God-given human will, we can choose to embrace the truth, which is God's will. And this truth, as Christ says, sets us free. So let's not confuse humility with fear, nor arrogance with the freedom of the God-given human will working in synergy with God. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to get one of our mugs if you don't have one yet, and watch for the mug shots at the end of this video. And please check out the new mugs we have that you see to the left and to the right of me, and we will have those available for you very soon as well. Goodbye, St. Maximus the Confessor, everyone. Thank you.